To some, it's a necessary evil. To others, it just gets in the way of a good name. But to me, it's a beautiful expression that fully encapsulates the full being of a mushroom. Mushroom Latin names like Chlorocyboria argyrescens or Rushula volutipes are a staple of the mushroom world. And although they sound complicated, they're nothing to fear. If you feel uneasy about mushroom Latin names, I wanna tell you that there's a reason behind this alphabet soup madness, and I'm gonna help you get over your apprehensions in this video. So why are Latin names important in the first place? Well, unfortunately with any living thing, we have to name them and we have to get really, really specific. Otherwise you could run into a problem where two completely different species of mushroom will have the same common name. For example, imagine a mushroom growing on a tree in Alberta, you might call that a tree oyster. And if there's a mushroom growing on a tree in Florida, you might also call that a tree oyster. And even though you'd call them both tree oysters, they could be completely different species. One of them might be edible, one of them might not be. Or for example, a mushroom like maitake, which is known as hen of the woods, might be confused with chicken of the woods, which is obviously a very similar sounding name, but a completely different species. Or for example, you could have a single species of mushroom like Coprinus comatus, but some people call it shaggy mane, some people call it the lawyer's wig, some people call it inky caps. It's really hard to know what's going on. Or even worse, a lot of mushrooms might be called false, like false morel or false turkey tail, which could basically just mean anything that isn't a morel or isn't a turkey tail. Basically, common names can get really confusing really quickly, and a lot of the names were just thrown out there by somebody, and anybody can basically come up with a common name, so it can vary region by region, country by country, and unless we have a defined system that explains exactly what the species of the mushroom is, it's really hard to know what's going on. But there's a solution to this, and it's the Latin binomial system for naming mushrooms. This system was invented by Swedish biologist Carl Linnaeus and published in a book called The System of Nature. It was a brave attempt to describe all living things under the ranks of kingdom, class, order, genus, and species. Fungi as a whole is a kingdom, the highest classification, which is sometimes why you might hear of mushrooms referred to as the fifth kingdom. They're differentiated from plants, animals, bacteria, and protists, which are the four other kingdoms. So when we're talking about Latin names or scientific names, we're talking about the two word names that refer to the genus and the species. And you might already be familiar with these. The most common would be Homo sapiens, which is the scientific name for humans in our current state, or Homo erectus, which is kind of an ancient form of humans. Or you might be familiar with the term canine, right, for dogs, and that comes from the scientific name or the Latin name Canis familiaris, which is the domesticated dog, or Canis lupus, which is wild wolves. And if you still feel a little uncomfortable with this idea, just remember that there are certain Latin names that you might use every day. Things like chamomile for chamomile tea, or plants like rhododendron or geranium or even things that you might eat every day like asparagus or citrus. Those are Latin names. To be fair, in mushrooms, some species names are challenging for sure. Names like Shrimpiolina or names like Chlorocyboria or Lusopaxillus. Even the familiar Psilocybe can be a tongue twister for some. And as far as pronunciation goes, I wouldn't worry about it too much. I definitely don't because there really is no correct way to pronounce these in the English language. So just go for it. When it comes to the fifth kingdom, you can also find a lot of useful information about the mushroom within the Latin name. And it can make it helpful to remember certain mushrooms and understand their characteristics once you know the tricks. Let's take a look at some of the common mushrooms, their scientific names, and how they got there. First off is turkey tail. Now, turkey tail obviously looks like a turkey's tail, which is why it has the common name, but there's lots of mushrooms that look like a turkey's tail, which is why it needed to be given the scientific name, Trimedes versicolor. Trimedes means the thin one, and this mushroom is very thin, and versicolor means many colors, which talks about the different striations of colors that are on the fruiting body of this mushroom. Next up is reishi, the powerful medicinal mushroom. Now, reishi has the scientific name, Gano Derma lucidum. Ganoderma means shiny skin, where derma is the Latin name for skin, and gano is Latin for shiny, and lucidum actually means polished or shiny as well. So it kind of means like the shiny, polished, shiny mushroom, which is a little redundant, but it makes sense because this mushroom really does have a varnished appearance. There is also other species of Ganoderma that grow like Ganoderma aplanatum or Ganoderma suge, which 
again, are from the same genus, Ganoderma, but are totally different species, so it's useful to know the difference. Next up is lion's mane, and it's an interesting one because there are a lot of species that grow in North America that people call lion's mane all within the Heresium genus, such as Heresium arenaceus, Heresium coralloides, or Heresium americanum. The true lion's mane and the one that you see in supplements is called Heresium arenaceus, and that's another one that is pretty useful to remember because the compounds inside of this mushroom are heresinones and arenacines. So once you know the scientific name, Heresium arenaceus, it makes are pretty easy to remember what the compounds inside of it are. In terms of its Latin roots, heresium actually means hedgehog-like, which kind of explains its spiky or spiny appearance. Next up is chaga with the scientific name Inonotus obliquus, which honestly is probably the least descriptive of all the Latin names and probably the hardest to say. Inonotus roughly translates to fibrous ear, which I'm not sure exactly why it would be called that, but obliquus refers to the angle at which this mushroom grows in the tree. Next up is cordyceps. Now here's one where we actually use the Latin name as the common name. We just call it cordyceps. The actual full species names are ones like cordyceps sinensis or Cordyceps militaris. For the common medicinal mushroom, Cordyceps militaris, the cordy means club and sep means head, so club-headed, which kind of makes sense. And then militaris means soldier-like, which also kind of makes sense because when you see Cordyceps growing, it looks like a bunch of soldiers standing at attention. There are some other fun scientific names that I do like to say. One of them is Shrimpulina, which I mentioned earlier in the video, and this comes from Rushula Shrimpulina. And why I think this one is cool is because Rushula Shrimpulina actually does smell like shrimp and it kind of sounds similar. It's just a coincidence, but it does make it easy to remember. Another one I like is the woodier mushroom, which has a scientific name Auricularia auricula, which is so nice they named it twice. Kind of reminds me of like honey mushrooms, which has a scientific name Armillaria melia, which also just kind of sounds nice and really rolls off the tongue. So next time you go mushroom hunting, instead of saying that you found woodier mushrooms and honey mushrooms, you can sound way more sophisticated and say you found Auricularia auricula and Armillaria melia. Another really cool one is Rhododus palmatis and I mentioned this one because it's really photogenic and you might have seen it before. People like to take pictures of it and put it on Instagram. It looks really really cool but the reason why this one is cool is because Rhododus palmatis is actually the only species in that genus. In other words the only Rhododus is in fact Rhododus palmatis. So you can actually refer to this mushroom just by calling it Rhododus. There are tens of thousands of different unique species of mushrooms, so if you're trying to learn the Latin names, the key is just not getting overwhelmed. Specifically, understanding the different unique characteristics of the genus can be very helpful when you're trying to identify mushrooms. Identification books like Mushrooms Demystified, for example, have dichotomous keys, which can help you identify thousands of species of mushrooms down to the species level, but it's organized by genus. So if you know the genus, you know exactly where to start. For example, if you're walking around in the woods and you find a mushroom that smashes into a million pieces when you huck it against a tree, it's very likely a Rushula because the genus Rushula has a characteristic where it's very chalky or brittle and is easily broken into a bunch of pieces. So if you find a mushroom like that, you'll know where to start looking into the book or into the dichotomous keys and you might be able to identify it down to a species level. Or for example, if you find a mushroom that has like a web under the cap, it's kind of covering the gills, you know that's most likely a Cortinarius, so you know where to start looking for what species it is. After some practice, you might be looking at a mushroom and you'll know right away what the genus is just by looking at it. For example, the genus Amanita, there's lots of different species, right? Like Amanita muscaria, Amanita phylloides, Amanita caesarea, but for whatever reason, they all just look like the genus Amanita and you'll become a lot more familiar with that through practice. As I always say, once you know the genus, you'll feel like a genius. Finally, I want to tell you about one more Latin name. Like us and subscribe to us. It's super easy to remember and you can learn it right now. Love them or hate them, Latin names are a necessary part of mycology and as I hope you learned in this video, they can actually be kind of fun and aren't as hard as they look initially. It's kind of fun to be out in the woods with your friends or with your family just riffing off Latin names and you can even feel free to make one up every once in a while. Who's going to challenge you? So I hope you like this video. I hope you learned a lot and we'll see you in the next one. Do you want to become a functional mushroom expert? I've got just the thing for you. It's a new ebook called Mushroom Powered, the history, the science, and the benefits of the world's most fantastic fungi. At over 130 pages, it's absolutely packed with all the information you need to know to learn about the world's most powerful medicinal mushrooms. And the best part, it's 100% free. You can download it right now. Just click the link in the description, enter your email address, and I will send it to you right away. I hope you love it.